Lovely to meet you. All right. David Mania is the Western Cape Provincial Minister of Finance and Economic Opportunities, a man on whose shoulders many South Africans' future hopes lie. I, I, David, I'm not exaggerating there, but with the semigration to the Western Cape, to the belief that who knows where the Western Cape will end up, but certainly uh, as an outlier to the rest of South Africa, people are hoping, many people are hoping, that the economy of the Western Cape can continue to outperform. And I guess that's in your remit. But starting off on the whole story about the South African ports, I know you have investigated this. Uh, it was a while ago that the report came out to say that South Africa's ports are amongst the worst in the world. Surely it can't be that bad. Well, the, the World Bank, as you said, quite uh, fairly recently uh, released a report on uh, container performance and set out uh, an index. And the port of Cape Town, if I recall correctly, was the 347th, uh, if you like, most efficient port when it came to uh, container uh, performance, which of course uh, is uh, dismal. Now, to be fair, I think, uh, to the port authority, uh, the, the data was drawn, I think, in uh, roughly about June last year when uh, we were at the height of the pandemic and where, to be frank, the port was in uh, real trouble. Uh, but regardless of the, the index, the truth of the matter is uh, it, it supports the general conclusion that there are significant uh, port inefficiencies uh, in the port of Cape Town. How do you address them as a provincial minister? Be, I suppose, different if you were the Minister of Transport in the National Cabinet. But how, what wriggle room do you have? So we have, um, Alec, you, you're quite right. I mean, we're constrained by the fact that we are, are not national government and the port, of course, uh, is uh, within the, the remit of national government. But despite that, we've, we've leaned in. We've set up a port stakeholders uh, workshop uh, where we have uh, pulled in uh, all the stakeholders, be they national government, local government, uh, provincial government, private sector and the private sector, the whole, all the stakeholders in the, the, the port logistics chain. Uh, and uh, we have, I think, uh, I think ch achieved quite a bit by simply collaborating with uh, different uh, spheres of government towards, I think, a common goal uh, of uh, achieving greater port efficiencies uh, in the port of Cape Town. So are you moving in the right direction? Uh, so I, I do think so. The, the, you know, I've been an outspoken uh, critic uh, of, the, of port efficiencies because, of course, it is a handbrake on uh, the economy, especially the, the export economy and the competitiveness of the economy in the Western Cape. But I do think uh, that uh, we, we are starting to move in the right direction. And I say that for two reasons. Uh, I have to give uh, Valile Dubé, who is the newly appointed CEO of Transnet uh, Port Terminals credit. He has implemented a, a short-term plan to improve port efficiencies, which does seem to be paying uh, dividends. The port is really focusing on, on five measures. Uh, they've certainly uh, done a lot to improve stakeholder communication, regularly meeting with all the stakeholders. They've started to improve terminal efficiencies by, for example, uh, uh, bringing in uh, four new rubber-tired uh, gantries. They've started to uh, increase the utilization of rail from landward ports like Belcon. Uh, they've started to deal with uh, truck congestion by implementing a new uh, booking system. And uh, at the end of the day, they're starting to uh, improve back of port efficiencies by, for example, extending uh, operating hours and starting to explore night runs. So uh, I have to give, uh, you know, the Port Authority some credit. The, there have been uh, short-term measures or measures implemented in the short term which I think are starting to improve uh, port efficiencies. But at the end of the day, uh, I think uh, what makes me 
possibly more optimistic than I've been in a long time about the port environment is the announcement made by uh, President uh, Cyril Ramaphosa last week, of course, that uh, the there would be that the Transnet uh, National Port Authority would uh, be established. And you know, if you cut down to the chase, what is essentially, I think, now finally being proposed. Uh, is a new model where essentially Transnet will be the land owner and there will be a space for private sector port operators in ports uh, across South Africa, which in my view uh, is a, a, a huge step uh, forward in South Africa. So maybe that horrible report from the World Bank uh, might have a positive outcome after all. But there are a couple of other things that are going on in the Western Cape that that require uh, maybe your insights. The whole story with Delta Airlines, what is happening there? Are they coming? Are they going? Are they being kicked out? Are they? Uh, what? There's much. It's much confusion for those of us who haven't been following the story closely. Well, just by way of background, I mean, uh, you know, Delta Airlines. Uh, I mean, applied for a triangular route, so they would be flying essentially from Atlanta uh, to Johannesburg and then through to to Cape Town, and. It appears that the, the, the Department of Transport are uh, opposed to, 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 to this proposal, but we don't quite understand why. We think it has something to do with protecting the, the, the domestic market. But what's remarkable in this case is that uh, Delta were never going to transport domestic passengers. In other words, there was no um, provision in the application to onboard domestic passengers in OR Tambo and transport them to Cape Town International. We've canvassed uh, the domestic airline operators who have no objection to, uh, to the, the pro proposed routing. And remarkably, other airlines have got approval for triangulated uh, routes. So that's a long way of saying, Anik, uh, I mean, we, we we simply do not understand uh, what has led to, to this decision. I, of course, uh, uh, you know, am taking this up robustly uh, with the, the Minister of, of, of Transport, Fakila Mbalula, who I spoke to uh, last week on this matter, and he has promised to review, review the, the decision and revert back to, to the province. So at the moment, it's still in the air, but hopefully uh, there is a solution. And then, then the whole story so with the, Amazon. The current, mm. current state yeah. of play is Delta Airlines will start to fly Atlanta, uh, Johannesburg, Atlanta on the 1st of August. Uh, they have not withdrawn their application for the triangular uh, route. Uh, and I think it would be their intention, uh, provided the, the, the routing is approved, to bring on stream at the appropriate time the triangle route between uh, Atlanta, Johannesburg, and Cape Town. And certainly, I mean, we are going to do everything we can to ensure that uh, that uh, uh, approval is granted because it's it's vital uh, in the long run for the e economy in the Western Cape. The other story, big story uh, in your portfolio is Amazon choosing Cape Town for its new head office of Southern Africa. And then all seemed good, 14 billion rand, and it's hitting blockages. Are you able to unblock that, or uh, is it a process that, that one has to go through? Well, the, the Amazon of, uh, um, investment is of huge strategic importance uh, to the Western Cape. They're one of the biggest uh, employers uh, in the Western Cape. Uh, and there have been uh, various sort of objections to uh, to the, the the new investment, but we are certainly, uh, together with the city of Cape Town, going to do everything that we can uh, to unblock that in uh, that uh, process and ensure that the investment goes ahead in the city of Cape Town. What does Amazon do from Cape Town? Well, I mean, Amazon is uh, an a huge uh, employer, and I recall. Uh, in the, the middle of the, the pandemic, at the height of uh, the, if you like, despair about the state of the economy last year, uh, Amazon put out a statement to say that they were looking to employ uh, 3,000 new, uh, uh, new, uh, new hires. And these are 
particularly young people uh, in the tech sector. And so uh, they are an absolutely vital investment for the city of Cape Town and for the Western Cape. So it's tech related. It's not moving boxes or like Amazon does in many other parts of the world. It's better known Am for Amazon for Web Services, um, yeah. and uh, they in the business of uh, you know supporting uh, various businesses with their uh, back end tech. Uh, but they are not, as you say, in the in the business of of moving moving boxes. Most importantly. From uh, my point of view, they are in the business of employing more people, especially young people in the Western Cape. David, over the past few years, you and your colleagues in the Democratic Alliance have, uh, well, been bemused at the former president, Jacob Zuma's ability to, uh, to get away with as much as he has. But it seems like, finally, uh, if, if we believe uh, the, the court ruling, he is going to jail. Uh, is this a cause for great celebration from his opponents, people like you, or could this I be a constitutional a big, crisis in, in the making, given that he's... Yes. he's uh, I think it's uh, a big uh, moment. For years, yeah. uh, former President Jacob Zuma has argued that he would like his day in court uh, and that he doesn't fear prison. Well, uh, it's uh, all now come to fruition, and yes, I think he will be going uh, to prison. Uh, and I think that that is imp important because it establishes or re-establishes the rule of law in South Africa. There could, of course, uh, be some downside uh, because uh, it is possible that uh, his eventual imprisonment uh, will uh, intensify the rivalry, uh, possibly, I think, even the civil war within the governing party. And I think there could then be risks to the kind of reform momentum uh, that has been built up uh, in in recent months by uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa. David Mania is uh, on the cabinet in the Western Cape and it takes care of finance.